Oh, well, hello everybody. We are back in my Model S. Uh, I know most Model S's are pretty much all identical, but there's just something about being in your own vehicle. It just feels different, everything feels right. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, driving a P100 DL uh, for uh, exactly a week was uh, kind of fun. Um, had some downsides, lower overall range, uh, lower overall range, uh, lower overall range, <laughs> and then of course then there's the uh, the loaner car speed limit limiter of uh, 85. Uh, that was kind of a, the downer, but it got to 85 extremely quickly. Uh, but, well, uh, we got, uh, I printed it out here so I could go over it. Um, I had my car in for some repairs. Everybody was asking me, uh, well, what, what, what happened to your car? Well, uh, what happened to my car is uh, I'm going to be hitting 50,000 miles extremely soon here. And, ooh, unicorns. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, while in general the car has been exceptional quality compared to uh, my old uh, MS60. Um, it did develop a few uh, quirks and squeaks and and creaks. Yes, just like that, and um, that was pretty close actually. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, insert little clip right here. You guys hear that? Yep. Uh, at least if I can find the clip, I just inserted it there for you guys to hear one of the, the suspension creaks. So, um, all right, well, let's go over the, uh, the repair list and uh, the responses. I mean, some of it was nitpicky and some of it was a little more serious. Specifically, the suspension issues were on the more serious note. Uh, let's see, number one, customer concern. Uh, creaking grinding from front left area during acceleration. Uh, noise is a metal and metal sound. Diagnosis on inspection could not duplicate the noise from left front, but did hear a noise from right front of the car. Uh, see repairs performed on line number 16. So, um, I mean, I mean, obviously I'm in the driver's seat. Uh, my left ear is better than my right ear. Uh, so, um, I thought maybe the noise was coming from the front driver's side, and it was apparently coming from the front passenger side. Fair toss-up. We'll get so. We're just going to go in order, line item by line item. Uh, customer vehicle bottomed out at a dip on the highway, which had never happened in previous vehicle. Uh, they wrote that one down wrong, which had never happened in this vehicle or my previous vehicle at the same spot on the freeway. Um, I kind of contributed that to uh, maybe something going on with my suspension and um, it's the same freeway section I drive I drive literally twice a week uh, every week for like the last 15 years obviously I haven't had a Model S that long and I've never had a problem there before um, so I thought I'd it's already in getting checked out might as well ask them uh, no problem found. They checked the ride height and found all to be in specs. And all suspension components are operating as designed. Uh, and granted, uh, this week I did not bottom out at the same point. Uh, the difference was uh, this time I had two adults, two kids in the car. And the previous couple times, twice, two times that I bottomed out, I had three adults, two kids in the car in about the same amount of cargo in the trunk so I mean don't know what to say on that but it's not bottoming out anymore which could be due to other repairs performed and before I get complainers again about me using printing everything out and wasting paper this is all paper that uh, was you know it's reused I'm reusing the back side of stuff that would have went to the recycle bin anyways uh, customer concern bugs and moisture enter tail light and that is the uh, rear left tail light on the um, yeah that was on the lift gate 
Um, and I actually had about oh, two and a half centimeters of water in there that actually sloshed around and it, it drained out overnight, but it was in there. And there's also uh, mosquitoes, dead mosquitoes in my tail light. Same thing happened if you go back to one of my really early, early, early videos from 2013 with my MS-60, I actually had spiders in my tail lights. But this is actually the first time on this car that any of my tail lights have been replaced or repaired. Um, unlike my first car, which I think it was like 15 times uh, because of water entering them. So that was pretty good. Um, so they replaced uh, uh, lift gate tail lamp assembly um, and the app lift gate applique, which is that chrome strip going across the back. Um, they would have also had to replace that chrome strip anyways uh, because um, of a another repair coming up later on. Customer concern. Exterior door handle is noisy when presenting the rear right. Um, now, Model S door handles, they have been pretty much the bane of these car existence since the beginning. Tesla, please come up with something better, at least a, a more reliable component for these door handles because this is getting excessively out of hand and the re out of warranty repair costs that people are reporting at like a thousand dollars a door handle um, is really quite ludicrous especially for the frequency of the failure and um, I am one of I guess maybe a few that do believe I mean some people have uh, failures and some people go the entire car's existence without having a single failure and of course, um, I, uh, maybe it's climate. I mean, Wisconsin, um, we get a, a lot of different seasons. Our summer versus winter temperature, we have a 100 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature, sw temperature swing. And uh, we go from completely dry to extremely humid and moist. I mean, it's our weather is, we, we have a mixed bay here. I mean, it's, uh, 95 degrees out right now and uh, in three days from now we're expected to have 60 degrees um, during the day <laughs> so they replaced the door handles mind you I just had all my door handles serviced uh, three months ago uh, and I'm still having grinding noise on a couple of them but I still got 4,000 more miles before my warranty's up so I'm planning on doing I'm not getting the extended service agreement uh, or extended warranty this time around I'm going to be getting the uh, probably going to be going in for that $600 overpriced tune-up um, and having them go over just about everything and um, also having a few more things taken care of at that time uh, before the warranty's up but this in general this car has been other than these damn door handles this car has been pretty solid and dude you're going the wrong way it's a one-way road and you're going the wrong way right in front of a police car so door handle replaced blah 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 uh, nothing done on the other door handles customer concern left hand front side trim is loose left hand front side trim is loose oh okay uh, where the control panel is uh, I mean they abbreviate some of their notes because obviously they only have so much space to write uh, the control panel on my driver's seat actually popped off and the clips were broken and just the act of sitting in the middle of the seat this plastic piece where the controls are uh, gets gets moved around quite a bit and uh, it was starting to tear away from the seat so they replaced the um, that cover and the clips um, cool um, so that's that's actually a brand new piece uh, the controls are Controls are the same, uh, they just let replace the clips and outer plastic mounting piece. Um, yeah. um, 
after after seeing a, a post on uh, Tesla Motors Club um, and on Tesla Owners Worldwide Facebook page, um, someone said their car, their driver's seat, uh, was shimming around a little, little loose. So I thought, you know, I thought I experienced that once or twice. So what I did is I sat in my driver's seat and I rocked back and forth a little bit, and sure enough, mine was loose too. And um, the other person said they replaced the entire driver's seat because of that. Must have been pretty bad on that one. Uh, in terms of mine, uh, corrections, front seat tracks and motor general diagnostic, diagnostic, diagnosis, driver's seat assembly has been ordered and replaced. So uh, basically the seat sits on uh, a frame that's bolted to the floor and there was something, something funky with that frame um, and it was moving but seems fine to me right now. So um, corrected. <clears throat> Customer concern. Left hand weather strip detaching. Uh, now I had my windshield replaced uh, about a month after I got the car, a month or two. The autopilot camera uh, apparently was having some problems. Uh, Tesla replaced the autopilot camera and then as I was leaving the service center something wasn't snapped in all the way and the whole mirror everything just fell down uh, ripping the uh, defroster strip for the autopilot camera off my windshield um, because of that the, that's non-repairable if I mean if a camera and mirror just fell down that just gets clipped back up maybe replace the clips uh, but they had to replace the actual windshield because the weather strip or um, the uh, defroster strip pulled off the glass non-repairable like I said and um, that must have loosened up there's seals on the roof um, that uh, help protect against water and apparently the driver's side seal and across the front is not very not in there it's kind of pressed in it's not something I really noticed too much um, until recently it seemed to have gotten a little worse so um, they did Tesla did not do to repair um, they want me to go to the local certified body shop and the body shop will actually do that repair um, it's going to be under warranty um, so I will have to make an appointment to take it um, that should be something I can do while I wait maybe take an hour and they got coffee and uh, a Chatimo station Tesla uh, Tesla high powered wall chargers and uh, it's Marshall Auto Body um, uh, uh, Scott Marshall was the owner and his son Aaron Marshall is actually current currently I guess in charge of expanding the body shop program for Tesla which is uh, cool so Scott uh, Marshall Auto Body if you're in Wisconsin or around Wisconsin forget the uh, body shops in uh, Chicago or Illinois just go up to Wisconsin go to Mar Scott Marshall's Marshall Auto Body um, much better job and they're actually a fair price they're not gonna screw you over like so many of these Tesla authorized body shops do. Uh, customer concern, front trim and anchor fasteners have fallen off. Uh, Tesla likes using self-sticky clips all over the place and frankly they suck and they don't stick very long. Um, so all the um, that fascia that's under the under the hood um, where the plastic trim is covering up the mechanicals uh, pretty much all those clips all just de and needed to be replaced so that is what they did <clears throat> next page customer concern left hand trunk carpeting is loose carpeting goes up the inside of the behind the uh, tail lights um, and I, no matter what I could do, I could not get that carpeting to stay up. And uh, whatever they did, it stays up now. Figured. I know it's a nitpicky thing, but if it's in under, if it's in there anyways, have them do it. Inspected liftgate carpeting resecured loose areas. Uh, they did scratch some of the plastics, but nothing, nothing as bad as what my kids do anyways in this car. So no big deal. Uh, 
right hand front door sill plate is loose. Um, when you open up the door, there's that plastic covering that uh, covers the, um, the door sill. And I'm gonna have little little clipplets of uh, video. Um, so um, that was loose. I have never removed that. Uh, I do know there's a fuse box behind there. And uh, previously I had, um, had to have my horns replaced. Uh, beginning of the summer because they sounded like a mo moped horn. One of them didn't work at all. The other one sounded like a moped horn. Uh, so maybe they were fooling around in there and uh, that didn't get snapped in quite quite too well. Uh, and they had to replace the the door sill clips and uh, verify secure. Looked secure. Feel secure. Good. Awesome. Uh, my backup camera was getting a little blurry and pixelated on edges, so they replaced my backup camera and still seems slightly blurrier than that P100, uh, P90DL I had, but it's a hundred times better than what it was. Like I said, warranty's coming up. Get the nitpicky stuff done while it's still covered under warranty, right? Can't blame me for that. And in and, and, and consolation, I did bring five dozen donuts for the service center when I went to pick up my car. Uh, lift gate intermittently opens slowly. Lift gate trim, general diagnosis, no trouble found. Opened lift gate numerous times. Each time lift gate opened normally, no problems found. I found it, my, on, Occasion, my lift gate opens about half of normal speed, and also the uh, the openers uh, kind of make a, a grindy noise. Um, I've had it in for the grindy noise before. They say I can't reproduce. Well, I hit the button every time I can reproduce the noise. Um, as far as it opening slowly, usually happens only when it's real cold out. And of course, the last week and a half has been an ex unseasonably hot in the Midwest here. So hopefully uh, we can get a cold snap and I can show them and I even said I can I'll have, I, I can give them numbers of five different phone numbers of five different people that will attest that it in fact was opening slowly. Either way it still works anyways so just gotta catch it on video. Problem is it's intermittent so unless I open the lift gate every time we'll video recording I mean I'm not really gonna catch it. Concern uh, right hand front arch liner is loose um, arch liner is that liner that's above the wheel in the wheel well there uh, corrections there's a second generation wow. uh, arch liner not secure replace arch liner and verified fitment um, so they replaced the arch liner no I've never been in a collision and I've never hit anything uh, I think my bumper was off on two occasions for repair though so it's possible that um, it was not that liner wasn't pressed in back um, after the repair who knows um, okay this one number 14 I'm gonna come back to number 14 because that's gonna be a little bit longer of a talking point <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, um, getting back to the suspension of the vehicle, uh, I had some more noise coming from the rear of the car, kind of like a springy noise as I accelerated and decelerated. Um, on inspection, tech found both rear upper aft control arms have had excessive play. Uh, now, Control arms are something that I also had done on my first car at 53,000 miles, and that would have been really expensive, but I did have the extended service agreement on my first car. Um, so <laughs> Tesla's got a real problem with control arms on these cars, um, and it's not just me either. Uh, replaced the upper aft control arm assemblies, both sides. 
uh, upper rear upper link suspension uh, right and left nuts and all that other good stuff that goes along with it um, and concern on inspection tech found right hand side battery tape to be loose and pulling away from battery housing uh, corrections cover ski side rail high voltage battery front right hand side replaced right hand side ski tape and verified secure cover ski side front battery enclosure cover ski side mid battery enclosure cover ski, ski side rear battery enclosure and uh, clips push pull clips 20 of them Hmm. So, uh, now just covering on the suspension part. Uh, well, the suspension feels better. I mean, if it was loose, it was loose. Um, handling, I mean, it actually feels a little stiffer, which is good. Um, unfortunately, I'm still getting all the, the suspension repairs they did on the rear. I'm still getting a... Uh, uh, as I accelerate and decelerate. Unfortunately, I can't capture it on camera very well. If I can, I will. I think I might just duct tape uh, my phone recording down on the side of the car to catch that. Either way, I still got five, four, four or five thousand, four thousand miles of warranty left. So um, I still got time to bring it in. And like I said, I'm going to go in for that uh, annual service and have them do a bunch of corrections. Oh, this is getting to be a long video. Last but not least, high voltage battery. If you've been following my range updates every thousand miles, you'll notice I've lost over 20 miles of range in less than a year and a half. Concerning, especially considering my first car lost zero range over the course of 80,000 miles and at 40, 45, yeah, I need a drink. I don't have a drink. Over the course of 45,000 miles, I have lost over 20 miles of range. Um, I brought in my data, my logs, uh, CAN bus data showing that my car is now only 78.9 kilowatt hour battery capacity. Yes, that's what the car says. The capacity of my battery is 78.9 kilowatt hours. I have a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. At least I'm supposed to. Uh, what Tesla advertised as a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack is actually only 85 point something kilowatt hours when new. So I have lost quite a bit. This is the part that's, I mean, at least I still have another six and a half years of battery and drive unit warranty. Correction, okay, cust concern customer lost 20 miles of range in the past year. Con corrections, high volt battery assembly, general diagnosis, conclusion, no trouble found. I already knew that was going to happen. Performed battery health check against Tesla fleet. Found battery to be operating within normal parameters, no problem found. I'm sorry, I got to disagree on that. Um, but we're just going to keep, we're going to keep, uh, checking it every thousand I mean uh, to me this is abnormal battery degradation um, we're at like 7% battery loss in one year and uh, if you look back at the old roadsters that are 10 plus years old they're only seeing about a 15% loss in capacity after 10 plus years and over 150 to 200,000 miles so that's it uh, it's got a lot done there's still a little bit I'm going to go back at and uh, and uh, try and touch upon in the future. At least the battery warranty. I can. I still got a quite a long battery warranty going here yet, um, so I can go back to that in, in the future yet. Um, still got to take it back again for that suspension noise. Uh, hopefully, I can try and capture that on camera and uh, go from there. Get that repaired before. Uh, warranties up although little known fact 
Uh, if you have a repair done under warranty or out of warranty, that repair is covered by its own one year, uh, I can't remember if it was 10 or 12,000 mile warranty. Uh, so even if your car ends up out of warranty, so say I have my system, I'll throw this out there. Okay, say they repaired the control arms on my car and at uh, 49,000 miles. And then at 58,000 miles on the car, the control arm goes out again. Uh, the control arm would still be warrantied. And then they repair it. That adds another year and 10 or 12,000 miles. Uh, so all repairs, whether under warranty or not, come with a one-year 10-ish or 12,000-ish, 12,000-mile 12, warranty on that repair. Uh, so that is it. Uh, in general, I'm very happy with what was done. Um, so let's just drive it and see how things go. And uh, as long as we're at it, um, I'm actually just dropped Chalet off at, at uh, school. She's going, to, going back to school for a while. And uh, they have a charge point here. This is one of the rare days that the Chevy Volts aren't icing this station because there's uh, apparently the assistant dean of this college, Milwaukee Area Technical College, plugs his Chevy Volt in in the morning, only charges in about an hour, and he leaves it plugged in all gosh dang day. The station has both a 120 out volt outlet, 20 amp, and a J1772 30 amp. If he's going to park it all day, he could plug into that 120 volt outlet and still be charged in like three or four hours. And mind you, if he's leaving, no, I doubt he's leaving his house with a full charge. It's probably too cheap char charging here. That would at least leave the high voltage or the uh, high amperage 30 amp connector available for the rest of us that actually need electric to make it places. I'm already down to, and it's only 1030 right now. And I was down to about 92 miles. I've done a lot of driving this morning already. So I'm back up. I've already gained 7 miles. My god, these charge points are slow. 30 amp. We're down to 197 volts. Ouch. So now that I got my car back, I have my charge point card. Works so much better than waiting for the very slow charge point app. But it's a free station, so I'm just happy to park here because when I'm parking here, yep, the Dean's Volt is over there in a regular parking space. Uh, he drove past me after I had plugged in and uh, just kind of slowly evil eye look and kept driving. So apparently I EV'd his Volt, but at least I'm actually charging. See you guys later.